What is up all you future cappers out there who are interested in law enforcement? Oh, welcome to the channel. In today's video, we are going to discuss and help you understand the CJ BAT. What is the CJ BAT? Is the Criminal Justice Basic Abilities Test. It is required for Florida officers to get into the academy. All right, you can't get into the academy until you take this test first. Now right off the bat, this test is gonna cost you around 40 bucks just to take it. Now, so you wanna make sure that you're gonna pass it and we're gonna help you in this video today to get that done. Another thing you're gonna to need to figure out is where you're gonna take this test, about colleges, all right? So there are probably some other facilities that you might be able to take it out, but just do some research, find out where you're gonna take this test at. Mine was at a, a college, a community college. I went in there, took the test on an actual computer. Now it could either be on a computer or in written format. Uh, it doesn't matter, it's gonna be the same same material, same things they're gonna be testing on. All right, so there are eight different things that they're gonna test you on, different abilities, and we're gonna go through each one of those step by step, kind of give you some information on them and what you need to maybe do to practice to help you get better at these. Now, first off, I wanna mention this book uh, that's gonna be very helpful for you so you can order it. I'm a person who likes to have something in my hand to study. I've done a lot of research and this one seems to stand out amongst most of them and seems to be the best option according to several, several reviews. I don't ever remember using a book, but I can't recall. It's been nine years since I have taken that test or more. Yeah, it's been a long time, so I can't really remember exactly what I used to study, but I've done research for you guys to help you out. Now this book is the CJ Bat Secrets book, uh, The Secret Study Guide by uh, Momentrix. Moment, Momentrix, did I say that right? Uh, but I will link it down below and I will link a few other items down below to help you guys get a full understanding that you can go back in on and, and research this stuff. It's gonna really help you uh, moving forward. Let's just get right into it. All right, so the eight sections here are going to be written comprehension, written expression, problem sensitivity, inductive reasoning, deductive reasoning, information ordering, and spatial orientation, as well as memorization. These are all abilities that are very, very important for law enforcement officers. We need to make sure that you can do these things before you move on to the next step or even going to the academy. Don't fear, it's not that hard guys and this video should be very, very helpful to you. So let's go. Written comprehension. So written comprehension is basically understanding what you just read. It's really, really simple because the test is going to lay it out for you in a big, large paragraph explaining in detail of what kind of event happened. So say a, a theft took place and it goes into detail of like, you know, Johnny stole, you know, this item for Sarah, but you know, it was at this place, this time and so forth, right? Then you go down, there's gonna be a question. The question's gonna say like, where was Johnny when he took the purse or something like that, right? Where was Johnny when he took the sunglasses? Then you're gonna have like A, B, C, D, you know, very easy, right? Because you can just go back to that paragraph and find it. So my recommendation for this section is to read the questions first. That way, when you are reading the paragraph, you'd be like, oh, there's the answer right there. And you don't have to waste a ton of time reading the entire paragraph. Now, there could be multiple questions based on this one paragraph. So like I said, read all those questions first. Don't just read one, read all those questions first and you'll need click. But I mean, you can still go back and forth even if you forget one of those questions. All right, so written expression is going to test your ability to understand sentences, right? So run on sentences or sentences where words are misspelled, testing testing your ability to spot these, these words and things like that. It's multiple choice, it's gonna be super simple. For example, there's gonna be a sentence saying, uh, because uh, Officer Johnson was working so late that he had to only get you know four hours of sleep before his next shift or something like that. But inside that sentence structure, there'll be a word that's misspelled. You have to identify which word is incorrect in that sentence or does not belong in that sentence. It may not be just misspelled, but does not belong. So another example is the inmates blank to use the telephone at least once a week, depending on their custody status, right? The inmates allowed, allows, are allowed, is allowed, which one is correct, right? That's what you have to figure out. Or your and your, you know, same sound, but different meanings when they're spelled differently, right? Or there, there, you know, things like that. So those are gonna be what you're gonna be tested on mostly in this section. Nouns, pronouns, adjectives, so forth. So it's it's testing your grammar. A big thing that can help you uh, understand grammar and so forth is just reading a lot. All right, read news articles, read, books, uh, that is all, that's all gonna help you build your understanding of these proper grammar. Or there's plenty of things online, the internet is infinite, right? There's something online that can help you. There's probably some kind of test that you can take that'll help you with your grammar. So just make sure that you're aware of that and you'll be just fine. All right, so problem sensitivity is basically identifying problems 
and prioritizing them. What needs to come first? Or, you know, based on a certain scenario, what do you think that this person did and why they did it, right? So what is the best answer there? So basically you pull somebody over for a traffic violation, um, it'll, it'll explain what was going on and what the man said and, and so forth. And then it'll ask you, you know, based on this information, uh, what is most likely the man's problem? What is most likely the driver's problem? Now, the man was under the influence of alcohol or the man was nervous because he had no insurance, things like that. So all of the all of the details to get you to the answer are in that paragraph. So this is another one of those sections where you might want to read the uh, question first and then go back in and answer that. So basically, it's just testing your ability to you know understand what uh, what is the priority in all of this. So a bunch of different things are taking place, but what is the most important thing out of this whole traffic stop? Is it the initial traffic stop or is it the fact that, let's say, this guy would give uh, indications of intoxication? intoxication, right? DUI, right? He's driving under the influence is way more important than the fact that you pulled him over for, you know, his, his tag light or an improper uh, lane change or something like that, right? So it's it's identifying what is the most uh, priority overall. Also, another uh, super simple one in my opinion because the answers are right there for you. So just just think about it, just read it, and just, you know, find what, what is most important out of this whole section and that'll give you your answer. Another example is could be like, it puts you in a position that you're a police officer and then your supervisor gives you a set of instructions, but you don't understand them. What should you do? All right, so it's gonna give you this list of things you should do. Should you just go ahead and just wing it? Try it yourself? Should you maybe ask for clarification? Yeah, you should probably ask for clarification before you just go jump into something. That's kind of important. So if you don't understand something, uh, it's, it's good to just uh, ask. All right, don't be afraid to ask. All right, so inductive reasoning is basically going to be testing your ability to understand charts, so pie graphs and bar graphs, right? Basically, they're going to give you these certain charts that show trending patterns. Basically, let's say law enforcement purposes. Uh, in 2005, the crime rate was this high. In 2006, it was this high. And then back in 2007, it went back down to this high. They're going to ask you, okay, and what year was crime the highest? You know, super simple if you just read the graph. It's there. Okay, so 2006 uh, was the highest year for crime during this time period. All right, so make sure you read the question carefully. Make sure you understand how to read graphs, bar graphs, and pie graphs. If you don't understand read graphs, look into graph reading and, and just understand that before we hop into the section. It'll be so much easier for you if you understand the basics of bar graphs and pie graphs and so forth. All right, so deductive reasoning. This is going to give you a list of you know, policies, procedures, or criminal elements, right? It's gonna give you these statutes, a list of them, and then it's gonna drop a scenario on you. And then when you read that scenario, you need to determine if a crime actually was committed, what crime was committed, uh, or if it was just a, a citation. You need to decide based on the policies, procedures, or criminal offenses, uh, statutes, whatever they give you, based on that information, what, what fits in that scenario. Did they commit that violation of that crime up there? Or was it just a, a minor traffic offense? Like you found that this violation was not in fact committed. So it's going to ask you that and you need to be able to determine if that's the case. Again, super easy because the answers are right in front of you because it's giving you this list. You just have to understand this list and read the scenario and understand if any of those elements of what is given is met in that case. If none, of thing, if none of those criminal elements are met or any of those policies are violated, then your answer is gonna be that nothing, no charges were filed, right? If it was, you could say it, it was a non-moving violation or it was a first degree misdemeanor because that's what it states in your list, right? It's gonna be given to you. So just pay attention, read the scenario and say, okay, this is what fits best based on that scenario. They met all these crimes. Keep your opinion out of it. You're going to learn this throughout your career in law enforcement that your opinion does not matter. You are to state facts. So you can be like, well, you know, maybe they didn't really commit or maybe they didn't mean to. No, that doesn't matter. You're looking at the facts of the case and only follow the facts. And if the facts tell you they violated that crime, your answer is they violated that crime and committed a first degree misdemeanor, first degree felony, or whatever it is. Answers there, just keep your opinions out of it. Don't overthink it, okay?
Cool. So information ordering is self-explanatory. It's ordering information. So they're gonna throw a bunch of information at you and your job is to put it in the correct order of events, right? So they're gonna say that I heard something loud in the front door. Charles hit me repeatedly around the head. I didn't want to answer the door because I knew that Charles was very angry. See, these things are out of order. You need to put them in order. So your answers are gonna be A, B, C, or D and it's gonna be like, uh, two, three, six, seven, eight is the correct order that this should be written in and in a series of events. So it makes sense. So you're basically just putting things together that make sense. So if you put that Johnny hit tsunami and that's the first thing that happens, well, what happened before that, right? So what, what made Johnny hit tsunami? So you need to put that in order. So uh, another good thing is that you're gonna get a piece of paper in this test, right? And they should offer you paper and pencil, that way you can make notes. That way when you, can, when you actually write it down, you'd be like, all right, that's it. There's the answer right there. Uh, that'll be very helpful to you. Super simple, guys. You're just placing the events in the correct order. This stuff is easy. All right, so spatial orientation is another super easy one because they're going to provide all the information for you. Your job is just to figure it out. It is basically you showing that you can understand directions. So super simple, north, south, east, west, street names, and so forth, right? So it's gonna say, okay, so you are here and you need to get here, uh, what's the fastest route to do that, right? What is the fastest route for me to do that? Do you go up this street, then take a right on this street, and then go up this street, and then take a left here, and then go up here? Or do you just go straight this way and straight up this way? It's testing your ability to understand which way is the fastest way and that you understand geographically. You understand north, south, east, west, so it's gonna ask, the answers are gonna say, oh, I go north on 300 block to turn right on the 400 block and, and so forth until I get to that destination. So it's gonna give you a list, but you need to pick the best one out of those list of answers that's gonna get you there the fastest and shortest way. So obviously the shortest is the fastest way. It's super simple because it's going to be provided to you. You're gonna have a map. It's gonna be visually in front of you. You just need to look at it and say, okay, what street is gonna get me there the faster? Read what the, the description is saying. So you get a call for a burglary alarm at this location and you are at this location. What is gonna be the fastest way to get there? Tell them the fastest way. Super simple. And last but not least is memorization. Now this one can be a little tricky, but it's purposeful, right? So you need to be able to remember what you just saw. You have two minutes to examine a photograph, right? They're gonna put a photograph on the screen, two minutes to look at it, and then that photograph disappears. You can't go back, can't look at it anymore. You have to remember what you saw. So make sure you are fully looking at this, this image for that full two minutes studying every aspect of it. Like what color were they wearing? What they, were they wearing? Jacket, t-shirt, so forth. Was it a white male, black male? Was there a dog in the picture? Was there, how many trees were in the picture? You know, was there a fence in the picture? Those are the things that they're going to ask you once it expires. So that's your question that you need to answer. It's pretty straightforward. Just really examine the picture. Two minutes is plenty of time to examine a photo. You know, there's some exercises out there, which actually you probably could find. I'll see if I could find something and link it down below. If I do, I, it will be linked down below. But some exercises that can help you practice memorization and that will do this. They'll probably do it for like a shorter time. You know, like show for like five seconds and then disappear and you're gonna say, you're gonna answer one of the questions like what was in this, this image. That'll really help you build your memorization skills and prepare you for this. But for the most part, two minutes is a long time. You should be able to examine it enough and the answer shouldn't be too complex. They're not gonna say, oh, how many blades of grass were there? It's not gonna be that complex, all right? You just pay attention to the objects that are in there, how many people are there and so forth, and you'll be just fine. All right, guys, so that is it. Now you're scoring. So now they just do, I believe, is just a pass fail, 70% or higher to pass the exam, but they're not gonna tell you what percentage you got. They're just gonna say you passed or you failed. Don't stress about it, guys. I, I think all of you guys are gonna do just fine, especially if you follow what I just talked about and studied. So if you pick up that book, read this section, I'm gonna provide a actual PowerPoint in below this video description. You can go to that and it'll literally talk about and cover everything that I just talked about and have links in there for uh, a practice test and all that kind of stuff. So very, very helpful stuff. You guys, if you follow this, you should have no issue whatsoever. You'll be just fine. Now your exam score, so say you, you take your CJ back, um, but then you have something come up and you can't go in the academy right away. You have four years, four years that test score is good for before you have to take it again. And I also just wanna say thank you guys. Uh, thank you for watching this video for one. 
and for two, for wanting to join law enforcement. You know, I, I really appreciate you and I just want to say thank you because we need you out there and we need backup and, and it's just been crazy times. So for you to be willing to still do this through all this craziness out in the world right now, thank you. And I, uh, I wish you the best, I really do. So I hope this video helps you and I hope my other videos help you. I have a whole section on this I call Let's Be Cops. So if you want to check out that playlist, uh, go check it out for more videos. Um, if you're not certain, if you actually want to be a cop, I make a really good video talking about the nitty gritty of law enforcement to make sure that you really, really want to do this. All right, guys, so uh, if you have any other questions, if I missed anything, hit me up in the comments down below. Be safe out there and good luck on your journey. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.